I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome to Grip Tips. Today, we're going to make a 1K dimmer. Now, I know a lot of you have probably already seen how to make a dimmer switch. I mean, there's probably 40 or some tutorials out there, but the, only, the one that I didn't really see was how to make one look like we use on set. Um, and that was kind of my idea in this build, was to try and make it as close to the real thing as possible. This one compared to the other ones that I've actually seen online. My lasagna is done. Some of the other builds that I've seen online are actually really, really good. It's just um, a lot of what they're doing isn't necessarily what we use on set. Like for example, I see this constantly that everybody's always using an extension cord that they found in their house to just cut. Um, and that's fine, but the problem is, is that that's not the correct cord. Um, and I know that it's such something small and stupid, but uh, we actually use 12.3 SJOOW cord, where an extension cord that you find at Home Depot is usually a 14.3 gauge. Now, I'm not saying that you can't use 14.3 cord. Um, I'm just saying that you probably shouldn't. 14.3 is a little smaller of a gauge, where this is a little bit thicker than 14.3. It's really highly, highly unlikely but you could start a fire. 12.3 SJOOW cord is actually the standard for the film industry as far as extension cords go. This actually took me $72 to build, but in comparison to like professional photo places, if you were to buy a 1K dimmer from them, it's gonna be like $114, and we're not even talking about shipping. So basically, you can save $42 with just building it. For this build, you're gonna need orange and red wire connectors, a faceplate or a weather faceplate, depending on how you wanna build this, male and female outlet connectors, two cord grip connectors, Teflon tape, three feet of 12.3 SJOOW cord, electron 1000 watt dimmer switch, and when you're in the hardware store, make sure it says 1000 watts, and one gang weatherproof box. Okay, now that we have everything laid out, the first thing that we're gonna do is actually push a lot of this aside because we're gonna do just a little bit of prep. The only thing that you're gonna need for the prep are your cord grip connectors, Teflon tape, the box, the plug to the bottom of the box, but everything else can go to the side. And the first thing we're gonna do is take some Teflon tape out. It's gonna go around the threaded side of our uh, plug at the bottom. Go around like twice. And once we're done with the plug part of it, turn the box over, We'll just thread it in. Let's get in there really nice and tight. It's okay if you chip the bottom of this. If there's a little bit of Teflon tape showing and it bothers you that much, just scratch it off. The other thing that we have to Teflon tape is the cord grip connector. So take out the little rubber piece. So you'll get it down to just basically <clears throat> what they would call a nipple, be professional. You'll go around these like twice. And now we've done it to both of them. <clears throat> Before you put back the cord grip connectors, um, there's one thing that you wanna do. You wanna grab your box cutter and you wanna cut the very top of the rubber that's inside of the cord grip connector. And then we have that nice little split. And you'll see later on why that is, but do that to both of them. And then just for organization's sake, screw them both back on, we can put these aside. Now let's move on to our cable. We're gonna grab our 12.3 SJOOW cord, and we're going to try and figure out what is the midpoint of our cord. And I'm going to say that like right here in this loop is where the midpoint is in my cord. So I'm going to go ahead, kind of have a rough idea where it is, and I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, now we have two cables. Let's put those kind of aside. We're going to grab our cord grip connectors, and we're going to connect them to each side. One here, and one here. Then take off the nut and the rubber piece that we played with earlier. I'm gonna put those off to the side. What we're doing now is trying to figure out how much cable we wanna actually play with on the inside of the box. So we're gonna feed both sides through. Now, as you can see, I kinda of have them standing up like this. You kinda of wanna do the same thing. I'd say that's probably like a pinky high so now, with our box cutter blade, if you can see right here, I'm going to hold here where this is connecting, and I'm gonna pull this cable out. And you can see my thumb is still kind of marking where I pulled out from. We are going to take our box cutter blade, and we're gonna cut all the way around. Don't apply too much pressure because you don't wanna cut into the cables that are inside. So now we're gonna strip this off. 
see that we've got this exposed and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. And now we have both sides exposed. And if you notice, I only took off the jacket. I didn't cut deep enough so that I was cutting the actual cables themselves. I was only applying just a little bit of pressure to my box cutter just so I could cut off this part of the jacket. If you're not really good at stripping wires barehanded with just a knife, then get somebody to do it for you. If we separate the cables, they've got kind of like a cardboard kind of uh, insulation with it. So we're just gonna cut those off. Now we have these white, black, and green cables exposed. With these cables exposed, what we're gonna do is take the cord grip connector rubber that we cut through earlier, and we're gonna feed this through. Now, here's the reason why we cut this earlier. The core grip connector, I know that there's a, another way to slide it onto the rubber jacket, but if you're doing this barehanded, it's extremely tough. I've tried and tried and tried, and all I always do was pushing the jacket further away. So that's why I've added the little cut here so that I can just easily work it around. And you can see now it's completely over it. And if you're concerned about that, don't be, because this is, this is just a, like when we actually go to put it in, this will squeeze down on it and it'll actually reconnect. So now we take that end with our box, we just slide it in. And this, this part, this nut that's actually inside that we put Teflon tape on may slide around on you. So just go ahead and take a wrench and tighten it all the way down. Now the next thing that we need to do is just take our nut, slide it all the way down at the end of the cable, and then tighten it down. Now just repeat the same thing for the other side. And once you have it wired like this, just give it a little tug. Not too much, but just enough to see if it actually slips out or not. Now, if you have a wire stripper, you can actually look at the wire stripper and it'll say 12 um, on the wire stripper. And that's, that's the gauge wire that we're actually gonna be stripping. So we'll go 12, we'll go to our wire, and we strip it off, it's just the coating. Then when we have our white wires actually stripped, we're gonna go ahead, put them together, and then twist them together. Then we're gonna grab one of our wire nuts. We're gonna grab an orange wire nut and screw them together. When it starts to give you a little bit of resistance on the uh, wire nut, it's connected and you can let it go. Now we've got these other wires. We've got two greens and we've got two black. Same process, we're gonna to go to the green wire first. And if you don't have a wire stripper, you can always do this with like a knife. I'm using wire strippers because it's faster. We're gonna take our two greens and our green here. We're gonna put all three of them together and twist them together. Usually the green that comes off the actual switch itself has a little bit of solder on there um, and it makes it a lot tougher than the actual wires that we stripped. So what I like to do is tr try and twist it around the two wires that I'm twisting uh, all together. And then we'll take our red wire nut, we'll put it over that, and then we'll tie the three of them together. Now let's move on to the more complicated stuff. Uh, for this particular dimmer, there's a fourth cable that came off of it. Uh, like we have a black, we have a red, we have a green, but then we have this red and white one. If you have a red and white one, all you're gonna do is take a little tiny blue wire nut, you're gonna stick it right on top of it. It basically, we're just leaving this wire alone. We're, we're not gonna use it at all. It's just there, um, so we can tuck that aside. Okay, so we've gotten this far. Now we wanna start putting these wires together. Well, there is a little bit of a way to do this. Um, the red wire is gonna to go to our female end. So I'm gonna put our female end on this side. And then our other black wire is gonna to go to the other black on this side. So these two black wires in here, you can see which side is which. This is gonna be our female end. This is gonna be our male end. And then we continue the process again. Strip this away. Remember out of the two black wires, this side, which is gonna be our female uh, connector, is going to go to our red wire. So then you just spin those around together.
take another orange tip, just screw it on to the two wires. As soon as they're together, try and pull them apart just a little bit, but not too much. You know, obviously, you know, your hands could totally pull that apart, but if you were to just give it just a little, little tug, just to make sure that it's connected. And then we'll take our other black end, which is gonna be our male end, cut the jacket off of that, put those two wires together and spin, take our nut, put it on, check to make sure that they're connected well. Now it's just the process of trying to fit all the cables inside of the box, which can be a little bit of a pain. So if you get a bigger box, you'll have more room to play with. But um, if you get a smaller box, kind of like I did, you know, this might take some finessing. Okay, now before we go any further, we're gonna connect these ends. And I'm not really gonna go uh, into detail on uh, as to how to do this, but basically I've got a tutorial where it'll teach you how to make uh, stingers and it's the same process. The only difference is, is that obviously we've identified that this side is going to be my female end because of that red uh, wire that's in there. And then this side is going to be my male uh, side. So we'll go ahead and wire that now. Okay, now that we have our ends on, we can put everything back together, right? Nope, I don't. I actually, I leave, uh, I leave this completely loose at first because the first thing I like to do before I actually tighten everything down is make sure that it works. There's nothing more irritating than pulling all the screws on and off and on and off and on and off. And it's just easier if you do it right the first time while you're already in the box. Just make sure that you don't touch this while you're plugging everything in. So. The other thing that you might have noticed is that I've actually taken a stinger here and just flopped it on the table, but that's because I'm gonna use this as an outlet. You can use your wall outlet, um, but I, just to make sure we've got power going to it, it's, it's wired correctly, so we're ready to go. It got extremely dark, as you can tell, but basically now what I'm doing is I'm gonna plug uh, the actual dimmer into the, uh, the stinger I made. Plug that in. Now I'm gonna take the other end, I'm gonna plug that into my light, turn it on, and turn it up. As you can see, the light that I have using, my work light, it's dimming, everything is working properly. And now I'm gonna plug in, just, just to be sure, I'm gonna plug in uh, my GFI uh, tester and make sure that everything is wired correctly. So when I hit the rocker switch, as you can see, everything is wired correctly. Make sure that before you actually start to put your cover on and stuff, unplug it. You're doing this at your own risk, so please, before you start putting on any covers, unplug it completely. Leave it bare and go from there. It's a nice little rhyming thing. That was terrible. Now we're gonna take one screw, place it in, and we're gonna tighten it all down. Now you can go with a faceplate like this and it'll work just fine. I mean, there's, there's really nothing too cosmetic about it. But um, I actually had this idea when I was going through Home Depot and I saw that there's like these rain guards that we normally have on outlets outside and uh, they work perfectly. And so now um, I can have, it, it's almost, it, it's not waterproof, but it's definitely water resistant. So I would feel comfortable having this dimmer out in the rain and know that everything is pretty well protected. I mean, I can still turn everything on and off, can still dim and then just shut it. And I mean, if this is facing upwards, all the rain is just dropping off. Um, and I know some people are saying, well, what about this little crease or whatever? I don't know why, but this is like, if you did have an outlet, you could actually have like a plug. And so it like just kind of opens a little bit, gives a little bit more rain protection. And that way the cord can actually come out of uh, this little hole here. But you know, for just protecting the switch, I mean, it's pretty well guarded now, so. Um, I could use this outside and not feel like all this water is going to get inside of all the internals. So, um, because as you saw, you know, we put Teflon tape here. It's, there's a rubber little gasket that basically squeezes onto the cord. So no water's getting in there. We put Teflon in the bottom. So no water's getting in there. I mean, this is almost, it's, it's so close to being waterproof. It's just not, it's just that one little hole. That's the only way any water could get in. So I guess if the, a flood happened, sure. But, uh, but otherwise, no, I, I think this is uh, it's a pretty good dimmer switch. Last but not least, we're gonna actually label it 1K dimmer. Or you could put 1000 watt dimmer. I mean, 1K is kind of the industry standard that I've heard 
uh, kind of over and over again, but that's kind of how I've labeled it as 1K dimmer. Um, and I think anybody who uh, would go into this box would understand this is for 1,000 watts. If you like this build, please like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, if you just want to send me a message, uh, you can follow me on my Twitter here. Um, and I'll see you on the next one. I have Parmesan cheese. Yeah.